Hello, I'm Rich Seneca. I'm a Central Pennsylvania attorney and an EMT student at the Harrisburg Area Community College. I'm making this video to provide you with a few important legal tips to keep in mind when working as an EMT. Please note that this video does not constitute legal advice and that you should consult an attorney of your own choosing or your organization's choosing when facing a challenging legal issue. Now let's go into conference room. We can talk a little bit about the format of this video. In this video, we're going to take a look at a couple scenarios. On one hand, you're going to see me as a lawyer, a non-EMT, a person with no specialized medical training, handling a situation. In the other set of videos, you'll see the EMT or EMT student version of me handling the same situations. Let me introduce you to EMT Rich. Hi, I'm EMT Rich. Every time you see me in a video doing something, usually you'll find that it's the right thing. When you see him in the video doing something, oftentimes it's the wrong thing to do. So follow what I do and use his examples as things that are the wrong way from a legal perspective to handle scenarios in the EMT world. And jumping right into the EMT world, our first scenario involves a patient who's refusing care who appears to know exactly what he's saying and understand the decision that he's making. Let's take a look. What are you doing, Randy? Are you taking a break? Hey man, I've been doing this all day. Whatever man, we gotta finish this room before the boss gets back. Oh, come on man. Randy, I think I'm having a heart attack. Steve, you okay? Steve? Oh Jesus. Steve, you alright? Randy, oh. Oh my God, Steve, I'm calling 911. No, it's alright. Th this has happened before. I'm gonna get through, I'm gonna fight through. No, Steve, you look terrible. I'm calling 911. Please, Randy, it's all right, it's okay. Is somebody calling the EMT? It's my friend Steve, he's hurt. What's going on here? I just... <coughs> uh, let me come take a look. Oh, oh no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. No, please. We're gonna help you, sir. No, 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 no I'm come on. I, listen, I've been doing this for years, I, I, I'll i be all right. Your friend's saying you need help. No, no, listen, I'm of clear mind and I don't need any help. No, I'm gonna give you treatment right no, now, No, no, I don't want to be treated. We have please, to start CPR. Get you, I have my rights, I don't want to see, what are you doing? I, do you have a clear mind, sir? <laughs> I do have a clear mind and I don't want uh, to be treated. Your, your friend's saying we need to treat you. Randy, I don't want any help. I, listen, I've been doing this uh, for We're gonna start I'm CPR, ready? Right? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh my God. 11, 12, 13. Oh God, he's dead. The scene is safe, and I'm donning my proper protective gear. What's going on here? Did someone call an EMT? It's my friend Steve. He's hurt. What's the situation? <coughs> let, let me come and check you out. Okay, what's going on here? Oh, you know, I'm just having a heart attack. It's all right. It's no big deal. I so just... Can I check you out? Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think so. I, I think I'm going to be okay. How about I just check your pulse? No, you know what? I, I, every time I get a heart attack, I just tough it out. I think I'll be all right. How, how about your blood pressure? Can I take that? No, you know what? I, I'm sure my blood pressure is fine. I just need to lay here for a few moments. Do, uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, yes, oh, loud and clear. And, and you're having chest pain? Uh, I am. And yes. you don't want any treatment? Uh, no, I'm of clear mind and I am choosing no treatment. Uh, I'm sorry, Randy. If he refuses treatment and he's of clear mind and understands what I'm saying, I can't treat a patient who's refusing treatment. Listen to the man, Randy. Sir, can I get you to sign off on a paper saying you're refusing treatment? Uh, well, I sure can. Where do I sign? Okay, I'll go get in the ambulance and unfortunately we'll have to end this call today. I'm sorry, Randy. There's nothing I can do for your friend if he doesn't want treatment. Well, that's it for the refusal of treatment segment of the video. Keep in mind that if a patient has a clear mind, understands what he's saying, and refuses treatment, you can't treat him, even if his friends want him to receive treatment. Let's head back to the law office and see what we have next. Boy, that was something. I'm sure embarrassed to see how I acted in that scenario. Let's move on to another one. This one involves the liability that EMTs face versus a regular person, like a lawyer who has no medical training, treating someone in the field. I just want to say, if you elect me as president of this township, I'll be the greatest president you've ever had. I know it, you all know it. We're gonna make this town great again. Thank you very much, thank you. Relax everybody, I'm a lawyer. No need to call 911, I'm a lawyer, I know what to do. 
Oh, here we go. Okay. Oh my goodness, he seems dead. Oh, he must be dead. We're gonna start CPR here. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, what seven, eight, nine, ten, oh, oh. eleven. Get off! Get off! Hold still. Can somebody get below? Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Hold still. Twenty. Are you? Oh God! Now I'm feeling sick. Oh God! Oh, oh, oh! Oh God! Oh Jesus! Oh my goodness! Oh God! He's dead. I'm dead. He shouldn't have been doing CPR. It was the worst CPR I've ever seen in my life. I'm dead. It was unnecessary, and he should not have done that. Folks, relax. I'm an EMT. Donning my appropriate protective gear, I've made sure the scene is safe. Checking the patient's pulse. Checking for breathing. Appears we have neither. Somebody call 911. Get me an AED. I'm about to start CPR. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. One, two, three, four, five, six. I just want to say this EMT did the finest CPR I've ever seen in my life. Unfortunately, he cracked one of my ribs, it pierced my heart, and now I'm dead. But I'll tell you this. He was the best EMT I've ever had. So the important thing here is that when you're an EMT and you render care following the proper protocols, if something goes wrong, you're immune from liability under Pennsylvania law. However, if you're a regular person, like Attorney Rich, uh, and you render care and you do something wrong, you're probably going to be sued and you're certainly not protected from liability. Now let's head back to the law firm again and see what else we have in store. Boy, I really screwed that up. Now let's take a look at two more scenarios. One involves me, and that's the wrong thing to do, and the other one involves EMT Rich, and he will show you the right way to handle a situation. Hey man, what are you up to? Oh, just out, uh, had an ambulance call, just treating Seth's uh, girlfriend, you know, Betty Jo Johnson. Got a real bad yeast infection, bad diarrhea. You know, date of birth, uh, January 14th, 1984. You know her, remember her? So what went wrong there is that I revealed patient information to people that did not need to know that information. This is an issue involving the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, also called HIPAA. An important part of this law says that EMTs and other healthcare providers cannot reveal protected patient information, that's information about a patient's care, uh, particularly information that involves patient identifiers, meaning pieces of information that would allow other people to know who you're talking about. In that scenario, clearly I revealed inappropriate information about a patient I was caring for, and I made it very clear to everybody who that patient was. Something you just can't do as an EMT. You need to keep all information you learn in the field while working private. Uh, so this next scenario involves EMT Rich, and it's the right thing to do, the right way to handle a do not resuscitate bracelet if you find it on a patient who is in a bad situation. And I did it my way. Yeah. Sir, sir. I'm an EMT. Are you okay? I'm donning the proper protective gear. I've made sure the scene is safe. Checking the patient for breathing. No signs of that. Checking for pulse. Oh, I've discovered a bracelet here on his wrist. It says, do not resuscitate. It appears to be a medical bracelet. I know under Pennsylvania law, such orders are valid. Does anybody know this man? No help there. I better go call medical control. Hello, medical control? <laughs> Yes, I'm donning proper protective gear. Yes, I made sure the scene is safe. Yeah, I have a patient here. He's not conscious. He's not breathing. He has no pulse. Uh, he's wearing a bracelet that says, do not resuscitate. I just want to make sure it's okay to follow that. Yes, there's nobody else here. It's just me and him. Okay, we will follow the order. Thank you, sir. Well, unfortunately, it looks like this man is deceased, and we did the right thing by not taking any steps to resuscitate him. So there you have it folks, a few important legal tips to keep in mind when working in the EMS world. 
In the last scenario, EMT Rich picked up the phone and called medical control when he had a difficult decision to make. That's something important for you to keep in mind too. Every scenario is different, and so when you're faced with a challenging decision, call upon the resources available to you to make the right decision. That includes medical control, but also your EMS company may have an attorney that they work with, and it may be that that attorney needs to be contacted in certain scenarios. Remember, this video included general legal advice based on Pennsylvania law, uh, but will not work for every scenario. And so there may be times that you need to call upon your own legal counsel to make sure you make the right decision. What I'm trying to say is this video does not constitute legal advice, but is just general legal tips to keep in mind when you're working in EMS. Thank you.